said I would do a video following up to my question earlier or my comment about waking up during the night and this comes up so so often I don't imagine many people will um, get to watch this live with the day that's in it so today being Remembrance Day but I'm also recording this on my phone too so I can upload it to YouTube if you didn't know I have a YouTube channel where I re-upload a lot of topics that I've covered so that people can find the videos fast anyway so earlier I did a post that basically said um, if you wake up during the night around 3 a.m. and that can be a range some people wake up around 2 and some around 4 so there is this range but generally around 3 a.m. Uh, also known as the witching hour but I don't think it's a witch waking you up or a ghost or anything um, but that probably would be more preferable than having adrenal issues so um, when people wake up around this time, if it's not to just pee or your dogs or your kids are annoying you, then there's an underlying issue. And generally we will recognize it's an underlying issue if it's a case where you wake up and you struggle to fall back asleep, um, where you're just lying there, not necessarily staring at the ceiling, but trying to think yourself asleep but you can't because you can't turn off your mind your mind is just racing um so and there can be many different reasons for that it's not one straight reason so i'm going to go through a few of them but if you wake up at three o'clock every night to pee and you go back asleep fine that's not a problem that's just like a habit your body has gotten into and that's your time and that's your circadian clock and that's perfectly fine um, if you find you get up to pee but you cannot fall back asleep because your brain is racing or your mind is racing then that is something that we would look at and the reason like this topic literally comes up all the time with my clients like especially every Thursday when we do biomarkers and someone will comment on their sleep and then we look at it and generally the issue is that they struggled to fall asleep or they woke up and they couldn't fall back asleep or they woke multiple tri times throughout the night again not the peeing multiple times but they woke up tossing and turning and couldn't get into deep sleep and they weren't sure why and in, if that is the scenario we would call that insomnia uh, a lot of people will associate insomnia with just not being able to fall asleep at all well there is that insomnia but there's also the insomnia where you're tossing and turning all night and you're waking multiple times and you're struggling to get into that deep sleep so that would be a case of insomnia too um, and I'm recording on my phone down here if you see me look down as well. So when we have these issues with sleep, it came up this week, actually yesterday, that I wanted to, I was like on a phone call with a client and I explained to her what happened and then I went, I should really do a phone call or a video explaining this to everyone because it's such a common thing. Um, and what happened with my client was uh, she was fasting on Sunday and then her first meal on Sunday was later on in the evening and she decided to take all of her supplements in that evening meal, which is fine, except one of those supplements was a B12 supplement. And B12 is a stimulant. It provides energy. It'll give you energy to get up and go, especially if it's a really good supplement, which hers, of course, is. Um, so then she literally couldn't get into deep sleep all night. She was tossing and turning. And then after a couple of questions, and this is why you work with a teacher or a coach or something so they can ask you the questions to determine what actually happened so after a couple of questions she literally said oh I took all my supplements at my last meal and I said did you take your b12 then and she said yeah and I was like that's what happened because it's a stimulant like caffeine it interrupted her sleep so she was tossing and turning all night and then it was like that ah moment and I know I had talked to her before and everyone about it before but people forget so this video is going to be helpful another stimulant obviously that we would 
try to avoid i generally say after 2 p.m that will interfere with your sleep so just kind of taking a step away from that adrenal issue right now that these are going to be stimulants that will stimulate your adrenals but they're not a stress per se like what i'm going to get into in a minute but it's going to be um your caffeine obviously and for those people that i see already are sensitive to stress and then their sleep is an issue i'm saying let's avoid caffeine after noon and people forget that that also is going to include your dark chocolate so dark chocolate is very high in caffeine and although it's an amazing snack and a very nutritious foods for many reasons and I do recommend it some people forget that there's caffeine in it so we try not to have our dark chocolate after 2 p.m. or if you're sensitive to stress on sleep then afternoon but also green tea contains caffeine so does your orange pioki um, not all of them some of them do so watch for the caffeine free label then uh, yerba mate which is a potent fat burner and i recommend it a lot of the time but yerba mate is actually very high in caffeine so that if you're having that later on in the day that will affect your sleep too so these guys are stimulants and they're going to stimulate your adrenals in a sense that they're going to excite them um and then babies of course could wake you up thank you auntie kizzy who is watching in ireland um so those just be cognitively aware of those stimulants um that that are going to be of high potency so yes we do get b12 out of red meats and animal products but your body will metabolize them differently so whole foods are going to be different so yeah you still can have your red meats in the evenings that's a different scenario that is a byproduct of bacteria it's not like you're taking pure b12 so that's different now then when we look at what else could be waking you during the night that might be now stressing your adrenals one thing that will stress some people is fasting fasting and again this is why you work with a teacher that you can communicate with and they can say well this might be happening or this might be happening you know fasting if someone is going to bed hungry at night or maybe they don't feel hungry but some people who have good metabolisms or they've exercised a lot or they metabolize their food very well if they become hungry during the night then that is going to spike cortisol that is going to then obviously wake up your adrenals which will send a, a response to your brain and you're going to wake up and it'll take you a bit of time to fall back asleep and in some cases you won't sense you're very hungry you'll just kind of feel normal in other cases you will feel hungry and of course many of us well most of us don't want to be eating during the night so um that's a case of kind of learning your lesson and how can i offset this going forward maybe i'll have some glycine before bed or a bigger last meal or move my last meal an hour closer or there's a few other things so that is something to be aware hunger will wake you up because it will activate a stress response in the body um and collagen and glycine and gelatin and stuff like that in your evening or in your evening tea can be very helpful um whether or not that will break fast will depend on the individual before people ask i can't comment unless i know the individual scenario um if you're doing fasting that is then of course dehydration will wake you up during the night even if you get up to pee dehydration will cause a stress response in the body because the adrenals very much depend on hydration to carry minerals into the adrenals so that will cause a stress response if you wake up and you're thirsty or you feel you have a bit of inflammation in your head like some light throbbing around your brain then that is going to be that dehydration so you want to load up on some fluids there some other things then that can wake you up during the night is going to be well chronic inflammation is going to be one chronic inflammation is a huge stressor on the body so chronic inflammation if we look at it from a physical aspect that might be um 
constant bowel issues, constant gut issues, constant migraines or headaches, constant skin reactions like rashes or eczema. So that is chronic inflammation. It just presents itself on the skin. Um, chronic aches and pains or stiffness in your hands or pain in your hands where you can't open or close your hands easily. Any sort of constant chronic pain is going to be inflammation. You cannot have pain without having some sort of inflammation coincide with it. So those all are going to be a constant strain on the adrenals. It's like they're drip, drip, dripping cortisol all day, every day. And that's then draining the adrenals because we get this big feedback loop from the cortisol response to the adrenals that you're in survival mode and we need to keep pumping out more cortisol and anti-inflammatory cytokines in response and so there's this big loop that happens that will stress your adrenals so you will struggle to get into good quality deep sleep you'll see you will wake up or toss and turn a lot um due to like the physical pain even if your mind is okay the pain itself is going to be a drain on your adrenals now when we look at the brain aspect chronic stress and i know many people roll their eyes when they hear that because it sounds so cliche lately and we're like literally so exposed to chronic stress more so the last few months um where you maybe are constantly dealing with stress at work and you bring it home and you can't shut your mind off or you're constantly dealing with a negative relationship could be a marriage could be a family member could be anything but it's constantly on your mind and you're constantly thinking about it um so this is a case of not being able to shut your mind off or maybe you have sick kids or something or you're a single parent so everything is on your shoulders so it's constantly go 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 thinking of everything all the time um but at work is obviously a big one for a lot of people especially with a lot of people working from home now you're not bringing your work home with you. Your work is at home with you. Like it's there all day, every day. Your laptop's always looking at you. So that's going to cause that constant cycle of always thinking about work all day, every day. And if it's very stressful, you're going to go to bed at night. Uh, you may struggle to fall asleep, but if you're very fatigued, you'll pass out, but you'll wake up during the night and you will then see that you can't turn off your brain. And not, not everyone is like making lists and they're not necessarily thinking about the troublesome area of their life. They may just be trying to think about getting back to sleep or literally lying there going, this is bullshit another night or like just just lying there not thinking of anything specific, but your mind is racing because your adrenals are racing. So this is where we would say you're caught in a state of like adrenal fatigue. You've put too much demand on your adrenals and now you just can't turn off. So there's this big cycle of uh, how the cortisol response works and the different ways we can track cortisol. But generally when you get to that stage where you're just having trouble sleeping and shutting off completely your cortisol is just like running in the steady state all day every day so you're just constantly getting this drip of cortisol which is going to impact your sleep and even your brain fog and how you think and even if you do get asleep you may not actually be dreaming so you're not getting into good quality reparative regenerative sleep which is really important so that's why i'll always ask clients at a consultation do you dream because that can tell me a lot about um the quality of the sleep that they're getting and if they're getting into a proper reparative state and how capable is their body at um, healing itself and how well might their insulin sensitivity be and all this stuff. Sometimes really simple questions can give you all of that information. Um, so there, when you wake up during the night, you can 
obviously if you know you're not like i'm not very stressed things are going fine i don't have any big things happening this week you, you lie there okay am i hungry did i not eat enough did i have caffeine maybe i'm dehydrated so you would ask yourself those first few questions but otherwise i mean most of us know when we're stressed or something's on our minds and generally i sleep really well what will wake me is if i'm hungry or if something's on my mind, if I'm worried, or it's been a very stressful day. And even if I do shut myself off and I do my evening routine and I go to sleep at night, so I'm like totally relaxed at night, I can still wake up during the night because the remnants of the stress during the day and the impact that had on my adrenals, that will wake me up. And at that stage, you know, and I literally be like, oh shit, I know what's coming next. I'm not going to be able to fall back asleep now for another 30, 45. It's even been an hour at some times and you're like, I'm going to feel rubbish tomorrow, which is going to stress me even more. And you get stuck in this vicious cycle. So it's very important to try and nip that in the bud as much as possible. So how do you do that? Obviously, stress management techniques. People ask me about that all the time. I'm very simplistic in a lot of things um, that I do in a lot that I teach, uh, I think at least. So stress management, I'm a big proponent of um, Epsom salt baths, as many people will know. So not only do you get kind of the benefits of activating heat shock proteins, the muscle relaxation from not only being in the bath, probably having a bit of privacy for 10 minutes if you're a mom. Um, you also will absorb the magnesium into your skin. Um, and one of the first things to go when you're chronically stressed, the first nutrient that gets depleted from the adrenals, because it's the adrenals that are doing most of the work when you're stressed, the first nutrient is minerals. So your magnesium, your sodium, your potassium, even your zinc, your copper, your iron, all of that starts to get depleted. Once that's kind of depleted, then our B vitamins are next. They get depleted next. So um, all of this is very important to remember. So an Epsom salt bath to me, candle, bit of music, just relax 10, 15 minutes. A book, I like to watch funny movies. Like, honestly, if we sit down, we can think of good stress management techniques. All you have to think of, what makes you happy and what makes you feel good? Do not say food, any of you smart arses out there. Um, we're talking about non-food or wine related stuff, um, funny movies, music, stuff like that. You can think of it. Go for a walk if you really like. Last night I was so, it was a very stressful day and I was like, I'm looking forward to a walk. The cold air will be nice on my skin. I look out the window, there's a blizzard. For a minute I did contemplate. I was like, I'll do it. I'll do it. And then I like actually looked and I was like, oh no, that will be hell on earth. So I had a bath instead and I felt a lot better after the bath. Um, some people love to just curl up with a good book, make a cup of tea, add some collagen to support your adrenals. Um, so there's a lot you can do to support your adrenals in that sense. If you're chronically stressed, I've done posts in here in this biohacking group library now that I'm calling it, um, talking about a lot of different adaptogens, ashwagandha being one. I did an ashwagandha post in here that specifically talks about timing and how you would take it. Um, so you can go check that out. You also can look at anti-anxiety things. I have a P, um, an infograph in here on um, how to approach anxiety, how to turn off neurotransmitters. You can look at GABA, 5-HTP, P will work for some people, not everybody. Um, maybe we could look at flower essences. I found them to be very helpful at the start of the pandemic for helping with my sleep. But then I found they made me feel lethargic the following day. So they are quite strong and powerful, but I felt like I was more lethargic the following day. But that's just me. That doesn't mean it's going to happen for everyone. So you can look at your flower essences or herbal remedies there. Um, and they're quite easy to take as well. But another thing before I let you go, 
um obviously medications can play an impact in your sleep as well in a negative way because they mess up your microbiome and then everything is connected but one thing that people forget about is toxic overload or toxin overloads so toxic overload is a huge player in sleep issues especially that insomnia where you're waking during the night and you can't fall back asleep what happens is when the body is overloaded with toxins, some of the ways you will see it is um, in your iris. So this is where iridology comes in. Um, so I do practice iridology, but I'm not offering it as a service yet. I've just been doing it on friends and family. But anyway, if you look into your iris, you if you see yellowy, orangey tinges, then that's a sign of will generally signify that there is some sort of toxic overload happening in your body. If you look at the wide of your eye and you see maybe yellow on the insides, that can show us that maybe your kidneys are toxic, heavy, and they may be struggling a bit and need a little bit of help. Um, also, if you get very stiff hands, elbow pain, shoulder pains, any sort of stiffness or inflammation is going to show us that there's an overload of toxins in the body. Um, one thing I found to be very helpful when I had toxic overload, I had a lot of pain in my elbow and just taking two activated charcoal before bed helped me get rid of the toxins but the pain eliminated almost immediately and my sleep improved almost immediately too and there's a lot of studies to support that toxic overload will be a big stressor especially a chronic stressor on the body but specifically the adrenals because it's the adrenals that have to respond to this stress and your adrenals if you didn't know they sit on top of your kidneys so then you've got your kidneys and your liver. So we got this toxins going through our blood, going through our kidneys, then through our liver. Every ounce of blood in your body gets ran through your kidneys and liver every hour. And that's a lot that your body has to do and that can be very stressful. So if you have a lot of toxins in your body, maybe your nutrition is not great. You eat a lot of junk food or processed foods or you don't maybe use the cleanest skincare products or household products or even if you inhale a lot of fumes and chemicals that's very strenuous or stressful on the body and that will stress your adrenals and we will see this and then when we start to detox the body what do we see we see people sleep improve and obviously the pain and the issues subside but we see sleep improve when we start to improve detoxification and what people are putting into their bodies as well so there's a lot kind of to unpack and this is just really the basics so i'm going to kind of run through it really quick and then i'm going to let you go to enjoy your day so when we look at this insomnia where um, we're struggling to turn our mind off maybe we can't go asleep or we can that's individual it, and it really depends sometimes people's bodies are so exhausted they just pass out but if your mind's racing going to bed you will then that will come back to the adrenals. So we've got the chronic stress, we've got toxin overload, we've got hunger, which maybe you didn't eat enough, or maybe your fasting is off kilter, or you over exercised or over trained. So over training is going to be a big stress on the adrenals. And we see this with athletes all the time, all the time, they think they can do it. And I'm um guilty of this as well we push 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 in the gym we train so hard and we push our bodies to extreme limits and then it taxes the adrenals it overstresses the adrenals um, and that will affect your sleep we've got the chronic inflammation the stiffness uh, we've got the caffeine we've got the b12 in the evening so a lot of this is what's going to be playing a part in that sleep issue so i before i go further i feel you have a lot there now to write down some notes make some bullet points and then reflect on what may be impacting you and your sleep and also if you're taking medications look at that too um because some medications will have an impact on your sleep through that negative feedback loop um so yeah 
if you have any questions whatsoever comment them below and i will respond to them but i definitely think you have a lot to reflect on there generally these are the biggest issues under eating goes hand in hand with hunger as well at night so look at if you're eating enough look at how hard you're training are you drinking enough what's your inflammation like are you fasting longer than maybe you should be if you're chronically stressed is the generally my first question is to my clients is there something on your mind is there something on your mind is there something worrying you or upsetting you um like i think you get the picture so i could keep going but we're going to leave it at that right now if you have any questions comment them below and i will get back to them otherwise enjoy your day i hope you found this video helpful as with everything i do i hope you're finding it's helpful and somewhat tangible um so goodbye and i'll chat to you guys soon bye